The scripture this morning is from uh, John chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hands into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see me yet and yet believe. So ends the reading. Will you uh, join me in the sermon hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, verses 1 to 3, and it's uh, 420 in the United Methodist Symphony. Sometimes we, we come to Easter service and we have all the beautiful flowers and we 
hear the trumpet music and we sing the celebratory hymns of Easter and then we wake up on Monday and it still feels like Good Friday. I mean, it's like, what's changed? What's, I thought I would feel different. Well, faith isn't about feelings. Faith isn't about that. Um, faith is about taking each moment, each event, each situation, the joys and the sorrows, and asking God to help us put those into our lives in new ways. The resurrection didn't fail when um, Cordelia died last Wednesday. The resurrection didn't fail when loved ones were um, diagnosed with cancer or aneurysms or um, resurrection happened and then every day is a new part of resurrection of what comes after because being people of faith takes time and it's one day at a time sometimes. Thomas came to his faith because he felt comfortable asking questions. He was honest about his questions. Sometimes I think we, we think, you know, if I question then I don't have, I'm not, I'm not being faithful or my faith isn't real, but that doesn't seem to me to be the way Jesus dealt with Thomas. And I think Thomas is a good story for us to know because Jesus said, yeah, here, here I am if you want to touch the places where the nails were, go ahead. And I don't think Thomas even needed to do that. He saw Jesus and he confessed, my Lord and my God. But it, there was nothing wrong with him struggling with that. There was nothing wrong with him asking questions. There was nothing wrong with his doubts. We all have doubts. And God takes that in, our doubts, our questions, our anger, our frustration, our how could this how could this have happened? Our pain puts that into God's self. And it's a process. It's a process of our becoming uh, followers of Jesus. The fact of the empty tomb is a starting point of the resurrection story. And whatever realities and facts that we woke up to Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, today, those are also starting points of the resurrection story. They're the starting point for your resurrection story, the story that you make real of Jesus' resurrection. Those are all for each one of the starting points. The sermon title, some of you probably thought, did Kathy lose her mind? Get on with becoming, believing. It's like one of my favorite um, fun authors wrote a book called Me Talk Pretty One Day. He has like, get on with becoming, believing. What does that mean? Well, if you literally translate Jesus' words um, to Thomas, what he's saying, he says, you know, have faith. It's not about unbelief. Believe. And what he literally says, though, if you translate it, is stop becoming unbelieving, Thomas, and get on with becoming believing. It's a process. It's not a one-time thing. What facts come to your mind when you hear Thomas's name? Well, you think of the disciple who doubted. He didn't have enough faith. There was something kind of wrong with him. He was less than. He didn't measure up. And that's what I think. It's like, but then I think, wow, he had witnessed the horrible death of his dearest mentor, maybe his dearest friend. 
he didn't know what to, well, he was in shock, as Cordelia's family was in shock. He didn't know what to think about, what to hope for, what was going to make sense. So he asked for proof. But we, we tend to think of him only as doubting Thomas. But how about the idea that maybe that was the starting point of his experience of resurrection. Just like we all have our own starting points of our experience of our faith journey and our way of experiencing resurrection. What if those starting points are not our starting points and not the whole end all be all and they're certainly not the end. And Maybe the best illustration of this is how many of you know what happened or what Thomas did after he had that experience of the risen Lord in that upper room? What happened after that to Thomas, with Thomas? Do you know? Yeah, he went to India. He went to India. He was a missionary, in essence. He was called to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus and Jesus' resurrection. He was an apostle, um, a, a missionary to the people of India. And he brought the good news of the gospel of Christ to India. We don't ever hear about that. Thomas the missionary. And he died for his faith. He was martyred. He was murdered um, by soldiers, probably because this message was way too threatening. They didn't want to hear that good news being spread um, to the people who needed to hear it. Now, that doesn't sound much like a doubter to me. I have to enlarge my way of looking at Thomas. Thomas and we are people who grow and change. And for Thomas, the resurrection became real every day. And the empty tomb made a difference to him every day. And it took time, and it took life events, and people, and experiences. Thomas was not only doubting Thomas and missionary Thomas, he was also confessing Thomas. He confessed, my Lord and my God. He confessed who God was in Jesus. That experience was a point in his experience of the resurrection of Jesus. All the stuff about Bowden Thomas, all the stuff that we deal with in our lives, it's a starting place. Some of them, the starting places are horribly, overwhelmingly painful. But it's not like they're good or bad. They are just they're starting places, and God is with us as we go through those. All of us want to do what those early disciples of Jesus did, lock themselves in a room, protect themselves, and keep themselves safe. That's the, the first disciples that Jesus visited without Thomas being present. Eight days later, Thomas was back in that room. Makes sense to me. Their loving savior, their mentor, their friend had been killed brutally and they thought they're going to come after us. We've got to hide. We've got to be safe. But what happens if you play it safe and you don't unlock the doors and you don't go out and you refuse to get out of that safe place. So I encourage you to think about this week, you know, what are the doors that are locked in your life? What are the things that keep you stuck in the same place that you need to look at changing? And I'll say it again, that's a starting place. Don't judge it as good or bad or right or wrong. It's where you are, and God loves you and accepts you that wherever you are. 
And Jesus is going to show up. Jesus shows up and he loves you and nothing can keep him away. Nothing can keep him out. And he says, I'm here. Open the doors. Open, unlock those doors. Come out and let me be with you. So, remember that when Jesus came into that room, that hiding place where the disciples were, he breathed on them peace and life and hope and courage and strength. And he breathed that into us. And that breath of peace is a key to unlocking the door. So when you're feeling especially overwhelmed, take a deep breath, take it in, and remember that that is the breath of Christ within you. That's the breath of the Spirit helping you, helping you in your process. So stop becoming unbelieving and get on with becoming believing. Amen.